International Music and Movement Festival. So this year episode, we did an interview with the co-founder of the festival, Brother Kwame Shah. Why well, I want her to chill in for tuning and Yeti a little bit more about him, the cracky teeth, but what we festival about and things like that. Because Hunter Chillin know if Hunter the day with me this year, the what going on. How Hunter Chillin to do this year, the Queen quite one more again for this year, Gully Get Your TV Nation News. Now, Hunter children used to see in this year face to come from the program and things like that, especially this year time of year, when it's most time for we international festival. This year, yeah, the drum, the Gwain Congo Square. Hunter children have to join me for the Gully Gitche Nation International Music and Movement Festival. And this year, the co founder of the festival, Brother Kwame Michelle, all mode production. Amp! Turn them up. What going on, Brother Kwame Michelle? Everything is good, everything is positive. Now, this year, many people may not be aware that the Gullah Geechee Nation International Music and Movement Festival goes to a different place every year. And this year, it's heading to Louisiana. Why take a festival that has to do with Gullah Geechee's to Louisiana? Well, first and foremost, you know that we do have a, a good amount of Gullah Geechee's that are in Louisiana in the state of New Orleans. Remember that um, when the migration was taking place from the uh, states, it wasn't just a northward migration, it was also southward and westward, including, you know, states like Mississippi and Louisiana, my mother being from Mississippi herself. So it's important because there is a lot of history in New Orleans in particular, in Louisiana, we were talking about the birthplace of the one true original art form that this country has given to the world, that being jazz music. Its birthplace is in Louisiana, and the ones who birthed that, that particular original art form are us. Those are our folks. You know, um, if you listen to even the second line, you can hear that polyrhythmic clap that you hear in the Gullah Geechee Nation. So we're taking you back to experience a part of history which again just like the Gullah Geechee history is still living, still flourishing and we really need to go to Louisiana around right this time because um, you know they're still recovering from the uh, ravages of Hurricane Katrina. You know that this country really did not do its proper due in terms of really working and helping to revitalize that area so our going there will help do that as well because, you know, as we bring people in, the funds generated will help to uh, spur the economy. And one of the things that people are unaware of is that 
we are also this year doing something that has not been done at this festival before, and I don't know of any festival really mm -hmm. where this has been done, but we are also taking care packages when we go, mm -hmm. um, specifically for the folks that are in New Orleans that are rebuilding and many that don't have a place to live still. Mm -hmm. uh, many people think that everything is back and copacetic, but it's not. There are many people, and there's a very large homeless population now in New Orleans compared to what it was prior to the two hurricanes that came back to back and mm -hmm. we all tend to remember Katrina's name and not the other but they were back to back hurricanes that they dealt with and something that's interesting about it is that being from the Gullah Geechee Nation I've lived through many hurricanes and many of the other people there have as well mm -hmm. and so watching the pattern <clears throat> shift where they start moving into the Gulf Coast is very interesting because mm -hmm. I don't like to use the word irony but very interesting in the sense of them developing off the coast of Africa and then at first starting to hit what were the major slave ports along the eastern seaboard for many many years mm -hmm. and then to shift into the Gulf directly to where we are headed which is where many of the people in that region were not only marched across as you mentioned but many of our people were taken around there and resold and sold down there. One of the things that would happen is many times people who participated in uprisings in the Carolinas who they felt they couldn't control would be threatened by being sold to the Deep South Yes. which is where we're yes. headed and so mm -hmm. that's another reason why a lot of Geechees are down there too because they are actually descendants of many of the warriors who were part of the uprisings early on mm -hmm. now interestingly enough you also mentioned the music jazz and you said it was an original American art form and I know there are many musicians who are Gullah Geechees who would beg to argue the point that well, really, if they didn't have the spirituals, you wouldn't have jazz. And so they would extend out from that. And I noticed you mentioned the polyrhythms. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure that'll be a dynamic covered since we're also going to Congo Square. Right. Well, that that's part of what you will find and what you will learn uh, going into the Congo Square area, going into the or New Orleans area. Yes, the spirituals are the root of, quote-unquote, jazz and blues music um, and as you said within South Carolina the spirituals are now the state's music again though what was the continued offspring from that tells a history of the strife and the struggle that people went through you know a lot of people you know have some challenges dealing with jazz in terms of listening and trying to interpret it but what you're hearing is <clears throat> the struggle to be able to still celebrate life and still celebrate culture, the remnants of what they were able to continue to hold on to, because if you remember, a lot of it was taken away. Congo Square was where, you know, the drums, drummers would come and gather. Uh, and that's where the drums were outlawed. So, you know, that again, being part of our culture, part of the way that we spoke, part of the way that we communicated with our ancestors, communicated with the one divine spirit, that now, that link being broken, you know, that creates a whole nother void in which you now have to find a way to express that. So if you only have access to a brass instrument or a string instrument, you now, just as we did with amalgamating the languages from West Africa, take those instruments, amalgamate them into your expression of your struggle and your, your, your continued looking for the celebration of life as you once knew it. And this is what now comes out as being the spirituals, first and foremost being the way that we're, again, looking to communicate with, with God. And from that, the shoot-off of the original jazz, swing, then to big band. And again, the only true art form, original art form that's been contributed, and it is the creation of us and our ancestors. Now, the thing about it is you keep mentioning New Orleans, but also many people may not be fully aware. We said to drum to Guan Congo Square because that is our first stop. That mm -hmm. will be the place where nights are spent over August 5th through the 7th over that entire weekend period. Mm -hmm. However, Donaldsonville, Louisiana is the actual location where our major festival activities will take place this year mm -hmm. at the River Roads African American Museum. Correct. And interestingly enough, when you talk about the dynamics of drums being taken, 
um, the chattel enslavement period, people trying to find means in which to still express themselves, many people may be very well unaware of the fact that this marks 200 years since the slave revolt, as they like to call it, of mm -hmm. Louisiana, yes. 1811. Mm -hmm. And so we are going to be going at a very, very critical time for many reasons, that being part of it, which people will learn about on the journey, mm -hmm. as well as this being the International Year of People of African Descent. So now when we look at the whole context of going to a historic site like the African American River Roads Museum, which is out in the rural area, as as Hunter Chilla might see, or in the D out in the country and thing like that, mm -hmm. and not into the town, but not into the city. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this way on this journey with the Drum to Gwine Congo Square this year, people will have an opportunity to see the juxtaposition of life in the city in the urban environment, yes. in the major city of Louisiana, yes. versus the countryside or the rural area where life has been very different, the history is very different, mm -hmm. and we'll be traveling through river roads, which also along that route is what they call Cancer Alley, mm -hmm. because there are many places where the major corporations have come in and exploited the land. Right. So it kind of builds on to that chattel slavery of the exploitation of the land and the mm -hmm. exploitation of the people and then the displacement of the people, mm -hmm. you know, with the migration of our people mm -hmm. westward, like you mentioned, but then later being displaced by storms. Right. And now we have the Scullah Geechee diaspora, we have the Louisiana diaspora. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really that point of bringing it back together. And so I know Congo Square that you mentioned is key because that was always a gathering place. The drum is key because it is always the sound of gathering. But now on river roads are all these plantations that we'll be going through. And, of course, paying homage, as you mentioned, to the ancestors. Mm -hmm. And so we know that on last year's journey, we journeyed the entire coast of Carolina, Georgia, well, from the lower part of Carolina, through the Georgia, Georgia coast, and Florida. through the Florida mm -hmm. coast, all the way down to Miami. Right. And I don't know of anybody else, any other group of people, who have ever done any such thing, mm -hmm. uh, pouring libation at all of these different points. So how do you think, I know you were there for that entire journey last year, how do you think that that will tie in to the same spirit of this journey we're taking from Carolina this year through Georgia and ending up in the Deep South in New Orleans and then onward to Donaldsonville and so on through River Road. How do you think the two connect for you? Well, it's it's like uh, something that I heard earlier today. It's like taking material into patches and sewing it into a quilt. So you have these patches, these pockets of Gullah Geechee's throughout the diaspora here in the US and what this does this this whole idea of taking the festival on tour allows it to now go to the different areas the different patches stitch and sew them back together that being the pouring of libation you now once again awaken the ancestors and let them know that there is a conscious living mindset who recognize the contributions that they made, recognize the culture that has grown out of what they were able to hone out of what would consider to be a very adverse situation, and let, let it be known that, yes, it is still living, there are those who still live it, there are those who will still say your names, there are those who will still pour to you and still feed your thirst, quench your thirst, by letting you know that the culture is still alive. And it's interesting because that key point of saying names, and there's an African <clears throat> proverb that states, as long as a man's woman name is cold, mm, yes. the man never, never dies. dies. And by the same token, I believe that as long same as a woman's, woman's name, name is cold, cold mm. the woman never dies. And so definitely the drum will be calling out and speaking for all those voices that have been lost along the roads, mm -hmm. not just the river road, but all the roads we're going to cross right. and route there mm -hmm. to just say thank you to their souls and spirits who were the warriors and the fighters who thought about the future generation, which we now are. Mm -hmm. And so that we definitely pray to have their spirits be at rest 
but for them never to be forgotten. And I think we would be remiss if we didn't do that in the International Year of African Descent. Yeah. So, Hunter Chillin, who the Yeti this year, from Gullah Geechee TV Nation News, Hunter got time for join we down in New Orleans in Donaldsonville, Louisiana, mm-hmm. August 5, 2, 7, 2011, the drum, the Gwine Congo Square. This is the Gullah Geechee Nation International Music and Movement Festival 2011. Come for join we churn. And mm-hmm. we're so glad that Hunter, the one of the sponsors, all mobile productions, and also one of the co founders, Brother Kwame Shah. So, thank you, thank you for cracking your teeth with we just a lee while longer for mm-hmm. Yeti this year but what a going on this year yeah and Hunter Chiller no this year the Queen Quet the other co-founder of the festival and host of this year program yes. and you know if Hunter did with me mm-hmm. Hunter going know what going on yes. thank you thank you Chillin see you in New Orleans see you in Donaldsonville with your drummy hand alright <laughs>